and breast implants have long been the bread and butter for plastic surgeons in South Florida, but one local doctor is considering eliminating them from his surgical rotation because of implant illness concerns. And late last week, the FDA went public regarding those concerns. CBS4 anchor Lauren Pastrana takes an eye-opening look. Power. Power. Dr. Dev Vibacher performs roughly 35 to 40 breast-related surgeries each month. But the majority of those procedures are not for breast implants. More and more women are turning to him for explant surgery. I already see the silicone oozing out. They want to remove their surgically enhanced breasts. And it was kind of a few patients in the beginning, but it's definitely skyrocketed over the last few months. I would say 90% explant and then 10% implant. He says many of these women are experiencing breast implant illness. The primary symptoms include brain fog, fatigue, joint pain, rashes, and then some chronic type of infection. Many suffered in silence for years, confused about why they were feeling sick. Slowly, support groups started popping up online with women sharing their very similar stories. And back in March, many of them went to Washington, D.C. to tell those stories to the Food and Drug Administration. Ladies that are suffering from BIA, uh, BII, or any Asia, anything else, please stand. Don't ignore us, we are real. Within months of implant surgery, I started having symptoms such as migraines and unexplained weight gain, despite my healthy lifestyle. That's Terry Jones Diaz. We first met her in late 2017, a year removed from her explant surgery. I was completely bedridden, waiting to die. She says she feels almost like her old self again now that her implants are gone. The FDA recently announced that while it, quote, doesn't have definitive evidence demonstrating breast implants cause these symptoms, the current evidence supports that some women experience systemic symptoms that may resolve when their breast implants are removed. We believe women considering a breast implant should be aware of these risks. It is ruptured. You would see silicone coming out, but... Research is still limited, so Dr. Vibacher is starting to collect his own data from patients in hopes of cracking the code of this mysterious illness, which could have an autoimmune or genetic component. I think the FDA meeting was uh, a huge stepping stone for me to reevaluate um, whether we're going to implant or not. Beatrice Zuluaga is a surgical consultant at Aquaplastic Surgery. I decided to take the stand and not do any consultations or any consulting with the surgeons and any breast augmentations for future. She says Dr. Vibacher supports her. Zuluaga herself has implants, and while she isn't sick, she plans to remove them anyway. I know too much, so now I'm too aware of the possibilities of what can go wrong, and I just don't feel like not that important to me anymore. My health is more important. I, do, I just do not want to wait to see if something would happen. Dr. Vibacher says he'll decide sometime this month whether he will stop doing implants, but it's clear he won't stop doing explants anytime soon. Has any science shown the cause for this? We don't know. Unfortunately, right now, the only definitive test is to take them out and see if they get better. It's important to note breast implant illness is not the same as breast implant associated anaplastic large cell lymphoma, which has been linked to textured implants. Research on that disease and its causes is also ongoing. The FDA stopped short of banning textured implants, but promised to increase efforts to collect and disseminate information about risks involving the device. Lauren Pastrana, CBS4 News, tonight.